morning, everyone. Um, great to be back after a few weeks. Um, my name is Andrea, and I'm here. I'm here for the knitting, and the yarn, and the community, 100%. So um, I'm back in Los Angeles after an incredible week in New York. Um, I was so fortunate to be able to attend some fabulous Rhinebeck New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, we also attended briefly <laughs> Woolen Folk. Um, anyway, it was a very special trip with my mom. And um, we just had an incredible time. We stayed upstate, the leaves were turning everywhere we looked. We were just, it was just breathtaking. So I feel really energized um, creatively. I also just need to say this right off the bat. I met so many people who were so generous and so kind who approached me, recognized me, which that's really extraordinary, um, and just had so many um, kind, meaningful things to say about um, being a part of this channel, this tiny little community that I hope is gonna grow bigger and bigger because it was amazing to me all of you that came up to me in person and it just meant the world to me and I love putting faces to names and it was just I thank you from the bottom of my heart it really well for sure it really made woolen folk <laughs> extra special um, anyway but the reason I'm coming on today is just because I want to reconnect and I do want to show uh, all the things that I came away with, purchased from this weekend. And one of the great things is that I did make a list. I was very intentional about my purchases um, because I knew that there were going to be uh, so many delicious candies to choose from. And I really wanted to be mindful of what I already have in my stash. And just, there were very specific dyers, wool makers, yarn makers that I really wanted to experience in person that I hadn't purchased online. And that's exactly what I did. So I thought I would share also just because we're not all fortunate enough to get out and especially us in Southern California and have like a tactile experience with a lot of these incredible dyers and uh, purveyors of incredible yarn and wool that are, I would say mostly on the East Coast, maybe the Midwest. Um, certainly there are some in Northern California, but this was just a really, I felt very lucky to be able to go, to feel everything. Um, and so I thought I would share that here in the event that you're also interested in this kind of, um, in this particular wool and just to encourage you all to go for it. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is my visit to Ann Hansen's booth at Rhinebeck. And her company is, her wool company is called Bare Naked Wools. And this was kind of top on my list because Ann is a wonderful pattern designer and she goes by Knit Spot. And she has designed just a myriad of shawls and sweaters and hats and wraps that really captivated um, my mom, my aunt, and myself when we were knitting 
kind of furiously together. So I've known about her for a very long time. Um, I've always wanted to check out the wool. And so um, that's kind of what I want to share first here. So I went to her booth, which was insane, but I got to hug her. She knew my aunt Nancy very well. And so that was a really special connection to make and acknowledge and communicate about. Um, so I was super interested in this Better Breakfast line of wool that she has. It is um, Merino, dehaired alpaca, and 10% nylon. And so I purchased a, I hope will be a sweater quantity. This is a fingering weight. And so it does have really generous yardage. It's 450 yards. I hope that's showing up. Anyway, this um, colorway is waffle. And you know, it does have a disclaimer on the labels always like, due to the artisanal character of our yarn, they may be slight variations in shading because these are, this is the wool from the sheep. And I don't know if it's really, I think when I hold it back here, it's showing its color really beautifully. It has this really warm, peachy undertone. I mean, this must have been a gorgeous sheep. So I got Better Breakfast Fingering. And just to describe, it is incredibly soft, like skin, skin soft. It has like beautiful bounce back. Um, I It feels incredibly special. And I highly recommend this Better Breakfast Fingering. I also got it a couple of skeins in the same um, Better Breakfast, this absolutely incredible charcoal gray. And this is going to be for, um, I believe it's called the Hesper, Hespera shawl that just came out, um, a new design by Savory Knitting or Amy Christoffers. This is going to be my main color and I haven't picked a, a contrast color yet, but bought that for this. Also just scrumptious, scrumptious. So this is also the Better Breakfast Fingering. And then I bought a, another trio which I might even need to get a four skein because I don't know what I was thinking. This is probably not going to make a sweater quantity, but possibly if I choose something like a vest, but this has to, this is going to be a cable something. Um, I love, I forget what it's called, but there's a beautiful Sari Nordland kind of tank vest pattern that was very popular over the summer. A lot of people made it in the Knitting for Olive um, silk, uh, linen silk, but, and this is a DK weight. So it's, but also in the better breakfast family. So this is without the nylon, it's 65% merino and 35% de-haired alpaca. And this color is, it says Americano. That's just so perfect. <laughs> anyway, super excited. These are so lush and so, there's just something about undyed wool. It's so, you know, you really feel a connection to the sheep. In fact, I was sniffing the yarn all weekend and sharing the smell with my cousins, um, who we got to stay with, just to share that experience of like, this is really, this is really the sheep. You get to experience the sheep. So that was super cool. Um, so that was a New York 
Sheep and Wool in Rhinebeck, a beautiful, beautiful town that I've spent time in prior while visiting my cousin in, he lives in the um, Hudson Valley in a gorgeous farm and we just had the pleasure of being able to call that our home for, you know, four days as we explored all of these um, different festivals. Um, so that was Rhinebeck. I also thought, I had been talking to my mom about the fact that I really don't knit with pink and I don't even have any pink yarn. And that I'm kind of, you know, I love pink, so why don't I have the pink yarn? So this is a kit I found just wandering around actually. Um, this is my one-off purchase actually. But I've never knit a pattern of Tammy Gore's, but I certainly have loved many of them. So this is called the Moving Points Shawl Kit, and it was um, curated by Foster Farm, Sheep Farm. Um, they, I believe, are local. They're, they're uh, attending, oh yes, they are. They're in New England. So they're, they're attending all the kind of local festivals and um, their yarn is stunning. So I bought this, it's called Moving Points Shawl Kit. And let me try and get it together to show, actually. And I've also never bought like cream colored yarn. So this was really fun for me to buy. This, um, these are all fingering weight and I wanna show the label. They all have um, different, I think names of their sheep. This one, this is a beautiful mohair hair that's called Bert and Ernie. I thought that was so cute, but it's very pink. I mean, yes, it has some peach, but if you just kind of look at this guy, it's got a lot of pink. So that kind of spoke, spoke to me, not to mention that I just feel like shawls are my jam. And I'm even considering declaring a year of shawls, which, that's kind of a, you know, <laughs> that's not a good idea maybe. But anyway, so again, it's the Moving Points Shawl Kit from Foster Farm. And these are, oh my God. That's, that's, an, that's an LA sound right there. People who rev their engines and drive like maniacs in the middle of the day. So there, you just gotta, well, not the best sounds of Los Angeles, but that's one of them amidst all the beautiful birds. So these are all fingering weight and these are plant dyed, which I thought was super cool. Anyway, I'm excited about this. Very excited. Um, and then the other thing I bought, which was I, I went I really was intentional about. Um, I went to the Matter Root stand and I bought this absolutely wonderful project bag. I had seen these, um, my very close friend, who I happened to bump into at this very stall, Jeannie from Los Angeles. Uh, we bumped into each other here and she um, introduced me to this uh, company and these bags and they are stunning. So this is a wonderful size project bag and it has um, really sweet inside color uh, fabric has a pocket, big generous pocket, 
and obviously can be folded down and it has this kind of like heavy canvas bottom can be used like so while knitting and then i also love that it has this clasp and hello well it was working hold on <laughs> anyway it just clasps there we go together like so and then you hello, just walking walking out walking around with my knitting I love this bag I think it's really special so I got that and that was basically my purchases I did think possibly I would purchase some fleece but quite honestly I I have plenty to spin first. So I did get a look at some of the wonderful dye studios that are offering fiber and, um, you know, made a mental note. Um, the, actually, I almost just forgot. At, at Sheep and Wool in Rhinebeck, I also procured this giant baby, like it's like a baby, <laughs> this giant skein. It's like 1,750 yards of fingering weight. It's called Katadin, 100% superwash, blue-faced, Leicester wool from Miss Babs. Miss Babs. Miss Babs, I know like people are obsessed with Miss Babs yarn. I it's new to me. So anyway, I got this. This is definitely going to be a sweater. Um, it's <laughs> um, yeah, it's just yummy, just yummy, and it's a perfect brown. I mean, I don't know if it's really showing up, but it's kind of like caramel and I'm sorry. Okay, that was annoying. Something just happened where I tapped something and the camera went off. Anyway, like I was saying, new to me, Miss Babs. Um, and I think this is so amazing that although I'm sure it will be kind of a challenge to skein up <laughs> or to cake up, but um, you know, it's just delicious. So it's kind of a very bronzy brown. I feel like there's even green. It's really like kind of a cocoa color. Um, anyway, I'm into it and I just, I'm excited. I haven't chosen something to, to make with this, but um, I feel like I'm gonna hold it with a lace mohair or surrey, something like that. So that is my sheep and wool. And just the experience was so wonderful, even though it was raining. Um, you know, the buildings are generous. There, there's just so much energy happening all around and it's really positive energy. And I got to meet a lot of folks that I follow on Instagram. That was really special. And yeah, just overall it was really, it was really wonderful. We kind of maxed out after about <laughs> two, two and a half hours. Um, so cute. My mom bought these like fried bread pieces. No, they're not called donuts. It's literally called fried dough. And then they're rolled in powdered sugar. And quite, quite honestly, they were incredible. So <laughs> that was our sustenance in that two and a half hour period. And because I had, this was my first time attending and I didn't realize that the hill is really where you meet your, your people. And I just thought it was like, oh, if you've made this sweater or if you're wearing this shrug. So I didn't go, I didn't go to the hill. And I'm super bummed because there's so many people I wanted to talk to and meet. So just, um, I didn't know that. Now I do, and I really hope to go back next year. Um, 
The other um, wool festival that we attended was the Friday before in, um, was it Hudson? No, it was Catskill, New York. And um, I'm not gonna go into sort of the debacle that it was, but um, I will just say that we got there and, you know, had a great time in line, met a lot of people that recognized me. I felt so special. My mom was, you know, basically my manager, taking photographs with everyone, promoting me, like blah, she was the best. Anyway, um, that was wonderful. And then we get in to the event and we pretty much got there like at 1230. So just not too long after it had opened. And it was really, it was a cluster. And I almost, I said to my mom, I don't, I can't do this. Like, I'm not doing this. This is so like, this is not an experience. This is not how I want to experience um, seeing all these incredible vendors in person. It was a crush and it was a really unfortunate, um, you know, I don't know all the details, but I'm sure anyone who follows any of the vendors that participated know that it was really horrific. I had a couple of bright spots. Um, my goals there were really to buy some of the Big Birdie yarn that I've heard so much about, but I haven't really wanted to pull the trigger online. And so I was able to, you know what though? Okay. I was able to buy a few skeins in colors that I really was interested in. So just gonna try and hold them up together um, I know lots of people know about this yarn because it's got an amazing reputation. Wait, I'm not sure I can. Okay, I'm just gonna make a, maybe a pile like this. Okay, so I was very fortunate to be able to get some skeins of this and I actually got two of this color, which I think is just a brilliant color. It's called Slug. Um, and then I also am in love with this blue, this beautiful, stunning blue. This is called Airmail. Also in love with this stunning, rusty, rust color called Cafe. Um, also in love with this colorway Oats, which is a really gentle um, off-white. And it has a lot of like, um, kind of like wheat, wheat color underneath. And then this one, which I also think is super yummy. And this is called Peanut really nice. So I was happy to be able to buy those and I got to meet Jackie and I met Caitlin outside. That was really special because I've just had a communication, DM communication relationship with them over the, the last few years and it was just really cool to meet them in person. Um, that booth was insanity. And I, I just, it wasn't fun to shop <laughs> at Woolen Folk. Um, I was just really, yeah. I was just like in and out as much as I could possibly be. The other dyer that I was super keen on was Explore Knits, who I've just been seeing so many of their um, collaborations with designers, and I was very excited to see their yarn in person. 
I um, purchased these skeins that are just freaking incredible, incredible. These are on the Denali sock base and Retiro Park is the name of the dye. I feel like this is from their Spain collection, but I'm not totally sure. And I also got the same colorway in this lace Surrey, which, um, so interesting how it takes the color so differently. Um, but I just thought this was like a painting, like a watercolor painting. So again, this is also Retiro Park on the Surrey Alpaca base. Um, I was very excited to get that. And I got to meet Ali, the, um, the owner of the company at Rhinebeck. And, um, you know, I've heard a lot about her experience at Woolen Folk, and I just have to say, it didn't show the whole time that we were there. I mean, they were so professional and helpful and I wouldn't have known that they had been through such a nightmare that they had been through. So I appreciate that effort. That's a big deal. Um, I don't think I could have done that <laughs> myself. So Explore Knits, they have such beautiful yarn. Um, I'm excited to make something with this. I don't know what it's gonna be yet. Um, and then the other thing I got, which was actually the only booth I could tolerate in the first building that we went into, but was very pleased to see that she was uh, like the, fir the first one, the first vendor. So this is from a company that I've purchased from before. Um, this company is called Mabel. And she designs these beautiful quilted project bags and tote bags. And I, a year ago or so, I purchased one, um, a, sm a very small one. But this year I saw this, this guy, it's very large. So definitely a sweater or a big shawl. I absolutely just loved these pink, pink flowers. I just thought it was really beautiful. I think there's even a name. It's called, oh, well, it's just called Quilt Bins, Pink and Red Irish Chain, which must be this quilting technique. I know nothing about quilting, except that I love it. Um, so this is a great bag to work on a surface with, but it's also really cool because there are these little built-in handles. So when you're done, you just pop it up and go on your, your way. So this is just a beautiful bag. I'm very happy to have, have purchased. Um, and I think she also sells online. Um, and she had a lot of product. And I know she was also at New York Sheep and Wool. So, um, yeah. So that was my um, those are my wonderful purchases from both Wool and Folk and um, New York Sheep and Sheep and Wool. And um, if anyone has further questions about any of it, oh wait, I forgot one. <laughs> this is also from Explorer Knits. This is also the Surrey lace. Oh my God, I just could not resist this. This was kind of like extra. I, I, yeah, I only bought one skein, which, you know. Anyway, the name is Fir, F-I-R, obviously, like the trees. Anyway, this 
this is a crazy color. It's, it's stunning. And just all the greens. I mean, the greens, look at these greens. They're just so stunning. Why? Anyway, okay, so I wanted to sneak that in. Um, so anyone who has any questions about any of the things I've talked about, please reach out and I can be even more descriptive if you'd like. Um, and then lastly, I want to share about a couple of whips that I came home to and I was just super excited to like jump on. Um, one of them, I just need to put a spoiler and I'm going to do it last. So I'm working, um, on the MCAL Westnitz Geogradient MCAL of this year. And I just got to clue three. So I've kind of, I'm working through clue three right now. So if you don't want to see what that looks like, don't watch the very end, but I'll give a warning beforehand. Um, and just with, you know, so anyway, I came home <laughs> and immediately jumped back into my instant crush, uh, instant crush pullover. So I'm not going to show all the yarn again, but I do want to show just my progress because I am super in love with it. It's okay. Shh. I'm super. Oh my God. How'd you get in here? Oh my Lord. Oh, dude. Okay. This is my instant crush so far. Oh my God. Stop. Anyway, I'm, I'm really loving it. I'm loving the colors. The, I'm so stressed about the world. My daughter is so far away. It's just a really frightening time, I feel. So it was nice to kind of get some distance from that over the last week and then come home and, and just re-enter these colors again. So this is my instant crush. The sweater is designed by um, Hohi Locatelli. It uses all double strands of silk mohair, surrey lace, whatever the fluffy thing is. I'm actually only using, I have this uh, Fua Fua is the lavender color from Moondrake. And I'm only using that single because it's really fluffy. Anyway, I'm so pleased. I'm about to split for the sleeves, I think. I'm working the size four. I know, I never talk about the size. This one I'm working a size four. I don't want it to be next to skin as in the um, example shown. I, I really wanted something like that I could wear with big, big pants. Okay, so Howl's here again. You're silly. But okay, I gotta hurry. Okay, Instant Crush. It's very fun. I highly recommend the pattern, especially as a break from the craziness and the scariness of the world currently. Hi. Okay, lastly, if you don't want to watch about the Stephen West MCAL, I suggest you don't. Like, stop right here. So I'm going to show my progress. So here is my shawl so far. I'm really not sure if this is even showing because I can't see. Um, I. I, let me see, I'm on the third clue, which is really beautiful stitch pattern. There are these also beautiful um, chevron lace stitches that this was a section I decided to add some mohair to my gradient. And then this is the center piece, which is actually a little rough around the edges. So I decided 
to do the first clue with three, four triangles. And then I thought I would just seam them together and it would be seamless. And you know, then it turned out I really wasn't paying that much attention to my triangles and they don't really line up in terms of colors, stripes. And it was just completely the most janky thing. So I did crochet a little square for the middle. And I don't know what I'm gonna do about these like, you know, Frankenstein stitches, but I might just leave them, honestly. Um, but I am really loving, loving knitting this. It's, I feel like it's a very accessible pattern and stitch way. And the way that Stephen West has designed the whole process where there's so much video support and, you know, how he handled that whole thing that happened in the beginning, I thought was so beautiful and sensitive. And he really met, met the issues with so much um, humanity and love and caring and to be honest, it made that ex it's making the experience of knitting his design um, even more special. So um, I just I just thought um, his response was so beautiful. Do you know my dog? I just have to I have to show you guys what he is doing and what he does all the time. Wait, I don't know if I can. Let me see if I can. That's my sweater. That's my new bag. That's my new bag. I mean, he just, he just <laughs> has to find the spot The worst place for him to sit and there's needles <laughs> he's laying on needles you guys I can't wait I have to show you again it's just I cannot with this dog look at him he's laying on my instant crush okay it's not a dog show anyway the little one howl has kicked Juno out of his bed Oh my God, Howell is running our lives. He, I, I don't wanna go into it too much, but even my big, beautiful dog is like very accommodating and terrified of the little dog. It's so hilarious. Anyway, so I am, I wanna go through the yarn again because I did buy the kit from, um, Stephen and Penelope, and um, the kit I purchased was all Qing fiber yarns in the gradient was called Sage, and it has all these really beautiful colors from dark to pale. And you can't see, but within all these skeins, of course, there's like really amazing variation. And this is on her skinny singles base, which is one of my very favorite bases to knit with. It is so soft and it's just a pleasure to have around you. So I'm really enjoying this and I'm enjoying the process. I don't feel rushed. Clue four has already come out. That's a wrap, but, um, I'm really enjoying it and prioritizing it. Okay, so that's my spiel. And again, I just so appreciate those of you who came up to me and said hello. That really made my heart so full. Like I kind of couldn't believe it. And it just, actually really inspired me that, you know, yeah, let's just keep staying connected and let's just cast these nets so wide and take advantage of all the 
opportunities to make these connections, share our love of knitting, of wool, of the process of knitting, of crochet. And then let's meet each other once in a while in the flesh and hug each other. And it's, it's just wonderful. Anyway, I hope everybody is doing well. Um, breathing deeply through your nose and exhaling with your belly through your mouth. Um, I'm treasuring all of the positive, creative energy that's around me, that's inside me. Um, yeah, anyway. I wish everybody well and um, until next time. Thank you so much for watching.